Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> this happened to me long time ago. In a sleepy little town on a slow Sunday afternoon, I was running fast on my new bike. And then suddenly, to my right, not one, not two, but seven stray horses flung, some to my front, some before me and some behind me, to my left, to my right, tall and short, black and brown. They were neighing loudly and it was a violent, explosive situation. At this point of time, what may have happened to me? I snaked and zipped through all of them. And this is before even I realized what happened to me. I was in one piece, absolutely safe, no scratch. And I realized that I was alive. What happened that afternoon? I could have been trampled. I could have been killed that afternoon. But what saved me is my sheer power of instinct of survival that's there in all of us. I was smiling, master of ceremonies, fellow Toastmasters. My topic is introduced by the MC so very well. It's about knowing our instincts. The day we are born, the moment we are born, our very first act is that of an instinct. Say experts, we cry. The harsh light and the loud sounds of this world make us uncomfortable. We cry. Born we are with our five senses that are directed towards, that are directed outwards. But they have inner dimensions to them. Our sense of sight, the corresponding inner inside sees what the physical eyes cannot see. Many an apple may have been seen many by many a person, but the way one person saw it, Newton, and he saw the law of gravity in it. Our inner voices so soft and subtle, so soft, whisper in us. They seldom shout. They reveal universal truths to us. And the lowly, humble tree stripe, how are the crime branch, smells something is fishy. And he feels it in his bones that he is the murderer. Quite contrary to what IPS officer thinks. Or the evidence proves. And it's proved right. So we are clear that and we accept that we have this powerful instincts. But then how do we use this powerful instincts? Let me share with you what I do. I follow the revolutionary, the path of the path breaking, the renowned Dr. Edward de Minos. Six thinking hats. Has anyone of you read this book? Okay. This book describes when I am confronted with a problem, it's a challenge. You begin with the easiest, the black hat. You wear the hats one by one, not one above the other. So the black hat is all about looking at the negative aspects of the situation. Negative, negative and negative. So easy, right? And then the white hat, remove it and put on the white hat. The white hat is not about positive. It is about the facts, facts and facts of the case. Has it is. The yellow hat is shiny, bright, and positive. 
like our sunshiners, yellow, rosy, rosy. The red hat is about raw emotions. I love to ring the neck of my boss. There's a feeling you have about him. Accept it. Let it be out of your system. And then the green hat, the hat of sprouts and shooting, fresh ideas, the brainstorming sessions. The blue hat sits on top of all these hats in the sense that it takes into consideration every single aspect of what each hat has been telling. At this point of time, I have used my intuition and what I do is, I let go. I let go by taking a long walk into the nature or meditating or just sleeping over the whole issue and then surfaces the solution on top when the soup of the five hats, six hats is settle down. Ultimately, Toastmasters, each of us here are seekers. We are seeking Satyam Shivam Sundaram. Satyam is for the truth that each of us want to see whether harsh or soft. And Shivam is for the consciousness to raise it to see the truth. And of course, Sundaram, who doesn't love Sundaram? Sundaram is the love, the people, the relationships that we have in our lives. And most importantly, the interconnectedness in this creation called life. So Toastmasters, are we going to use our sixth sense and see Sattam Shivam Sundaram? Yes. Over to you. Yes. Thank you.